Hey everyone, Baldurk here. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, something I haven't done before. Um, I'm going to be doing a One Piece video. Now, for those of you who follow my streams, my Twitter, or anything like that, you probably know by now that I'm an enormous One Piece fan. Uh, I've been watching it since I was 15. For some perspective, I am going to be 31 this year, so <laughs> that should tell you right there how long I've been into this series. So... And that's just from what I can remember. It could even be older than that. But what I want to talk about specifically today is it probably says in the title is Thriller Bark. Thriller Bark is one of those arcs that's kind of skipped over, not very well liked, or a couple other things in the community. It's not one of the most well-regarded ones. And while a lot of that is true in terms of it's not like one of the best written ones, it's probably one of the least climactic endings with the enemy and everything like that. I think it has a much deeper purpose in the story uh, in the sense of foreshadowing of things to come. So there's two parts to this video. I'm going to go into the things that are concrete. Definitely, this is part of the story. We know that these are confirmed. And a couple of the things that I can take both from speculation from things that happen in Thriller Bark and some of them are things that come from other theories that are widely believed in the One Piece community. That could or could not be true. So that'll be in the latter half of the video. So if you don't want to hear any of those, um, don't worry about that. Now, as a forewarning, I am a manga reader. So there could be some spoilers if you're not caught up in the manga. Specifically, we are in Wano, one chap uh, chapter 1016. I don't think I'm going to be referencing it too, too much. Just in case anything does come up and you don't want to hear that, you're an anime-only person, I would definitely make sure that you... Uh, I'll, I'll say it before I do, but just be careful and listen for that so you can pause or skip that part of the video when I do say that. So let's get started with some of the things in no particular order of what has been confirmed, and that is Thriller Bark for one, 100% foreshadows the entire Yonko saga. Now when I'm saying the Yonko saga, right now we're talking about Big Mom and Kaido. So what do we know about those two? So, um, Big Mom obviously has the power of souls. She can turn him and objects to be like living things slash her servants with pieces of her soul or other people's souls, whatever she wants to do. She like absorbs people and stuff like that. And that's part of her powers by using those kind of things, souls and transferring them. And Kaido, we know, actually fought Gekko Moria, the main villain of the arc in the past, um, in some great duel that actually destroyed Gekko Moria's spirit because all of his crewmates were wiped out. And that's part of the reason he's trying to do this whole undead army type thing. So number one that we can already surmise is living objects becoming, uh, or I'm sorry, inanimate objects becoming living slash sentient creatures in some way, shape or form happens in this arc. We have, you know, the whole like, a tree, you know, like, and all those things becoming to life. There's like a shield somewhere that is like talking and shit. All of that stuff happens in this arc. We have the shadows from his ability, Gekko Moria, that can give life to inanimate objects because they have a person's personality. It's kind of the same idea as Big Mom's homies. So it's a little bit of an idea of what was coming down the line. Um, obviously... The Kaido references he fought Kaido, but also there is Ryoma and the so and Ryoma's sword. The big things about those is that means that Gekko Moria was in Wano, probably fought Kaido uh, in Wano as well. I think they actually say that that happened. They do with the Odin flashback, I'm pretty sure. But anyways, so Gekko Moria fights Kaido in Wano, and that's pretty much where he goes to steal the blade. Um, so we know that tie-in already. We have our first instance of hearing about Wano, which obviously is extremely important to the story. <clears throat> Lola is Big Mom's daughter and literally gives them the Viver, uh, the Viver card that they use later on to find Big Mom. Pretty big plot point there. What's one of the main things that happens in Thriller Bark with Nami? A wedding. What's the theme of Whole Cake Island? A wedding. Both of the That can't be a coincidence that the arc that Big Mom is pretty much like hinted at slash not introduced, but like you're starting to learn a little bit more about her without us actually knowing we're learning more about her because of Lola. There's a wedding. So definitely something very interesting there. 
So we also have uh, Big Sake, which obviously is an important song in the series. I'll get into a little bit more about why it's important later on. But things we do know about it is people even like the Roger Pirates saying it is one of those things. And we know that Brooks is from that time period of an older age of pirates where Roger wasn't even like prevalent at that time. So it's interesting that the song was introduced there. But also the concept of souls in general, because that's how Brooke came back to life as his his fruit brings his soul back from the dead, like literally hell, I think he says, which is a very interesting concept in the series. We have Ors, the continent puller. Now, obviously, Ors is a character that we've referenced or the story is referenced many times. We have like Ors Jr. We know Ors Jr. came from Wano because of the whole thing with Ace, the hat uh, the woven wooden hat, or not wooden, I'm sorry, straw hat that he made or whatever it is, which is obviously something that he learned from Tama. So it's very interesting because it seems like he must have found him in Wano, which if that's the case, that's going to lead into something I'm going to talk about a little later in the video. <clears throat> we also have, and I don't remember her name, but the assistant to the doctor, who's like the, the girl who throws the plates, one of the big parts of her arc is obviously she has the shadow of this character, of that um, girl he was into. But what's interesting is that in the end, instead of being controlled, she was able to resist because her will was strong. Her soul was able to resist these things, which I think is going to play a big part with, you know, willpower and everything, which is obviously a huge theme of One Piece. I think that's an important distinction to keep in mind is that we were able to see in this case, even in like death slash transferring to another body, somebody's will was able to persist even through all of that. Now, the other big thing, we know that there's a concept of One Piece called the Dawn. And I'm not the first person to make this connection, but obviously one of the big celebratory moments is getting to the dawn in this arc because the dawn is what indicates either they're dead or they've won because their souls are sorry their shadows have either returned to their bodies or they're going to evaporate as soon as the sunlight hits them so there's a whole big thing where the dawn is like this really big exciting party scene like they're all celebrating when the light hits them and they can survive they've escaped the shadow or the darkness to finally go into the light which is a really big central point of One Piece that it said that the world is in an eternal dark or a, in a long night, long darkness, whatever you want to call it. And the dawn is what's going to change that and bring happiness and somewhat freedom to the world from the oppression, which is the world government, basically. Now, we're going to get into a little bit of the speculation points now. So there's a lot of stuff in this that is not confirmed. The stuff that we just talked about are things that obviously we can confirm because they're things that have happened in the story. Some of these um, are going to make sense, I think, and some of these are a little bit more out there. But I want to talk about them anyways because it's fun to speculate a little bit here and it brings up some good points. So, one of the big theories that's out there right now, if you take a look at Wano, Wano was split into many different parts. We know... Gecko Moria found Orz's body in some icy place. We also know that Gecko Moria was in Wano, stole a sword, which was in a icy place, took the body of Ryoma and infused it with a shadow. So he must have taken a lot more than that when he was there. And one of the big theories is the reason that Wano looks the way it does is because Orz, the continent puller, actually pulled all those separate parts together to become Wano. So it's an interesting idea. Obviously, it's not confirmed, but with a name like Continent Pillar and an island like Onigashima that's obviously shaped like a demon or an Oni's head, which is kind of what Ors looks like, it's definitely got some ground to be a pretty solid thought to be what could have happened in the beginning of Wano. Now, there is the idea of it's a floating island. So we know for a fact that... Thriller Bark is a floating island, and you can't always find it because it's constantly moving. It's hidden by mist. There's a bit of a mystery of why no one has been able to find um, Laftail, or Raftel, if you want to go by that one. And one of the theories is that maybe the island is able to move, or it's hidden by something, and there's some condition that's needed to bring it out. So this could be an, kind of an idea of why it's so difficult to find. 
is that there is something kind of hiding Laugh Tale, and this was, or it's moving like a floating island, and this could be a hint towards that. Obviously, this is not confirmed. This is complete speculation, but I think that this could be an indication of just a difficult island to discover kind of deal. Even though it's not really an island, it's a ship, but still. You know what I'm getting at. Um, Brooke, his whole crew is dead, and we know the goal of his crew originally, their story arc, was to get back to Laboon. They wanted to complete their journey and return to Laboon. Well, Brook's power is he's the Soul King. He can work with souls. In fact, he was able to stand up to Big Mom, a literal Yonko, because his ability counters hers to a certain degree. If he was able to use Conqueror's Hockey and was like a lot stronger than he is, he would he could beat he would hard counter Big Mom, which would be amazing. But he can't, and he lost. Anyways, I think it is entirely possible that his ability will at some point allow him to actually maybe not summon, like, bring back to life, but communicate with the dead, like, souls. Bring them back for a brief moment, and I think there could be a really cool reunion of sorts of the whole Rumbar Pirates with Laboon once they eventually get to Laboon at the end of their journey, or at some point during the journey, whenever they make it past uh, the latter half of the Red Line, when they get past Reverse Mountain. They go start going back, or however that plays out. Uh, and there's a big theory on that. I won't go into that right now, but I think that's a really cool thing. Now, this is a huge piece of speculation that has almost, almost no grounds yet, but it's been heavily talked about a lot in the community. So I want to bring it up because this could be an important piece of foreshadowing that was also brought by Thriller Bark without us even realizing it. There's a theory, and we know, and I'm going to say right now, manga spoilers, so if you are not caught up with literally chapter 1016 at the moment of this recording. You might want to skip like a minute ahead or something like that. Okay. Kaido says he is in Wano because it is Wano. It's important. We know Wano plays an important role in the story. The theory goes, is Wano the actual name of the ancient kingdom. Whether it is Wano in general, that's the ancient kingdom. Was it moved by a continent puller? But is Wano the original name of the ancient kingdom? And that's why it's so guarded, so um, cut off from the world. The reason it closed its borders and kept people out was because they were protecting that ancient history, their old culture, and that is one of the reasons why. One of the biggest hints to this is Toki. We know Toki was looking for Wano. And we know when Toki was using her powers, one, she was from the 800-year void. Two, when she used her power, she didn't show up immediately at Wano, but she was looking for it. So she knew Wano, a country named Wano, existed. And three, she knew that she had to go to Wano at a certain time for a certain event, which means she knew that Wano would be roughly in the area she was going to, and at, at that time period, it would be there. But what's interesting is, if that's the case, why didn't she just go to Wano in the 800-year void and use her powers then? So the theory is, and because of how she is dressed in like a traditional Wano outfit, perhaps the old country of Wano, the original country of Wano, was the actual ancient kingdom. Part of it could have been destroyed or whatever it was, but the continent puller moved the main part of Wano away during whatever was going on with the world government, and that is why it is closed off. As they knew the dangers of the world because they were probably attacked or destroyed to some degree by the world government kind of thing. So, definitely an interesting idea. Obviously not confirmed. There's grounds for it to some degree. Um, there's parts of it that has grounds, other parts that don't, but interesting idea nonetheless, and if so... Thriller Bark would have been our first foreshadowing to the country of Wano and Ryoma. And we know Ryoma was also one of the people who actually kept people out of Wano. And he became the hero of Wano. And when the gate, or the borders of Wano were closed, he was one of the ones that showed his power and kind of prevented people from challenging Wano anymore. At least that's how the story goes. So I think once we get into that past a little bit and learn a little bit more about Ryoma, his role in the story and what he actually did, and why the 
borders were closed, I think we're going to go into some really interesting territory here. Not to mention that, you know, the stonemasons who made the Poneglyphs were from Wano, specifically the Kazuki clan, so definitely some strong implications to that regard, any way you look at it. Okay, done with that super speculation, there's a couple of the little things I got going here that will wrap up this video. Kuma is introduced in this arc. We don't know Kuma's full role in the story. We know he was part of the Revolutionary Army. He willingly gave himself up in the protection of the Straw Hat Pirates. Is there a specific reason besides him just being Dragon's son? So we know that Kuma is an important player. Exactly what his role is, we don't know. I don't think with this arc being so heavily invested in things to come, such as the Yonko saga and things like that. Oda was placing little breadcrumbs for us to follow. I think Kuma may play a role, maybe not exactly in the Yonko saga, but what's to come after the Yonko saga. There was also the government event, The Reverie, so there could be something with that, or it could have happened at some point there with Kuma. We learn a little bit more about him when we get the aftermath of what was going on. Uh, the whole thing with Sabo hasn't been resolved, so we'll see. Um, other than that, we also know the Florian Triangle monsters, or whatever they are. We don't know. There was those three creatures at the end. We don't know what they are. I wonder if this was kind of a hint towards uh, Zunisha. Were they creatures similar to Zunisha that are uh, kind of cursed to roam the earth, or that's their imprisonment, or punishment, I guess that's the better word. Why are they there? Why were they shown in the first place? What is their purpose? I don't think they're more elephants because of the way they're shaped, but maybe there are other creatures or other things in the world that have the same fate as Unisha, and that's going to play a role later in the story. Um, and this could have been our first glimpse of big creatures being, for one way, shape, or form, punished to roam the earth for one reason or another. What that is, who knows? Maybe, maybe, not just continent pullers, but these giant creatures also did something similar to what Ors probably did, and that's probably why, like, Zo is a roaming country, right? Because it's on the back of Zo. Zo and Zo, you know? Or, well, Zunisha, I guess. Zunisha has Zo on his back. There we go. That's better. Maybe that's part of the reason, is these creatures were uh, cursed with moving these countries around because of something that happened in the past. I don't know what the purpose of the three in the Florian Triangle are. Maybe they have something to do with the mist or fog that's there. Who knows? But the fact is, is that we have our first glimpse of giant creatures wandering the water in this arc. So, I think that's about all the points I wanted to make. As you can see, obviously this arc is it has its flaws and it's not the most amazing arc ever. But it was definitely made to kind of put these li <coughs> excuse me, put these pieces together so that we, the readers, could have something to go back to because all these events were in some way, shape, or form foreshadowed in the story. That's going to wrap up this video. This was a long one. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, the way I do this video, or anything like that, please like, comment, subscribe, anything like that. Uh, definitely leave comments. I would love some feedback to know how this was. What can I do better? I know I'm a little bit stuffy, so I apologize there, but I really wanted to get this video out. I've had this script for like a week, and I've been trying to kind of get it out and do it. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please comment with any suggestions of how I could change up this format. I put a lot of work into this, so I hope you enjoyed. But that being said, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time.